Hi, I'm Lisa Prather, and welcome to The Voice of Health with our host, Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, where lives are changed every day through the natural approach to health care. Well, today we're talking about how to avoid surgery. And we have a lot of patients that come in and are really wanting to do that. Their mm-hmm. last, you know, their uh, uh, surgery's been recommended, and that's not something they want to try one last thing. You know, yeah, before avoid. they go into that. And we'll have a testimony of one of our patients uh, mm-hmm. at the end of this show that talks about that, who um, was avoiding wrist surgery and, and was able to. Um, Certainly. So, Dr. Prather, why should um, we avoid surgery? Uh, Because you can die. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Good reason. You know, there is a certain percentage of almost every surgery that people die as a result of that surgery. Uh, So not only death, but also complications. You Mm -hmm. know, there are an awful lot of complications that can occur. Uh, there can be uh, blood clots, uh, there can be infections, um, you know, uh, there can be even problems from the anesthesia. Uh, in, in other words, there's a lot of issues that can occur with surgery. Uh, surgery is considered an invasive procedure. Mm, I would, uh, if it, yeah. you know, about as invasive as, as you can get, cutting somebody open and mm-hmm. rearranging the uh, structure in there. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it's... It has a reputation of being uh, very safe, mm-hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, it's a lot safer than I'm, it used to be, uh, but uh, it is still not a, uh, you know, a guarantee of, uh, of uh, health and longevity mm-hmm. by any stretch of the imagination. Mm-hmm. So how many surgeries a year, you know, are done? Uh, there are about 51.4 million surgical procedures that are done a year, mm-hmm. which is um, an awful lot. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that uh, is something that's talked about is a lot of them are uh, should be avoided. Mm-hmm. Um, an example on that. If you go to a surgeon and for your uh, back mm-hmm. and uh, to you know get your care done, uh, and you go to a surgeon first, you have about a thirty percent chance of winding up in surgery. Thirty percent chance. Thirty percent chance of mm-hmm. surgery. If you go to a chiropractor uh, for the same problem. You only have a two percent chance of winding up in wow. surgery. Wow, two percent versus thirty percent. Two percent versus thirty percent. Interesting. So those were some very uh, interesting type of figures. Yes, and that gives you an idea of the difference that can be involved in that. If if you're going to someone, you know, uh, for a a problem, and they're the the ones, you know, that are you know, looking to to do it, uh, chances are that you are probably going to um, have a much higher percentage chance of actually winding up with the surgery. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, if, if you know, what you are is, is a hammer, then you're looking for nails all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> is a good way to put it. Well, what's the mortality rate of surgery? And I, um, this show and and this topic came up um i don't know dr prather if you want want to share that you had a yeah a new patient come in right who's had great results in a short amount of time and she shared that with somebody correct correct i'm gonna let you tell the story okay Uh, you were doing a great job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but I wasn't there, so. <laughs> and uh, they were recommended for neck surgery. And this particular patient had really bad neck problems, had even had surgery before, and had not really had great results with it. Uh, we adjusted her, and within a short amount of time, almost all of her symptoms, which had been there for uh, 20 years, had disappeared. And she was talking to uh, this uh, neighbor, and she was saying, you know, I'm, I'm going to be going in. I've been recommended for neck surgery, so I'm getting all prepared for it. Uh, you know, they had gone through 
other different types of things and hadn't really worked. And she said, oh, I've got this uh, chiropractor who fixed me up, you know, fantastic. Mm-hmm. You know, you should go see him. And she goes, oh, no, I don't want to do something dangerous like chiropractic. I'm going to do surgery, something that's safe. <laughs> <laughs> and it's 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 uh you know and she said and you know the 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 patient really didn't I mean, you know, she knew how well she had done underneath her care, but she didn't know the statistics or any of the things that are, you know, mm-hmm. involved with that. And, uh, it, you know, she was saying, you know, how gentle we were and, you know, that, you know, there's no twisting. But uh, the whole thing is that, uh, you know, there, there's there's the whole thing of, of insurance coverage. Uh-huh. Um, you know, when you're talking about and, you know, when you actually apply for insurance, malpractice insurance, and they uh, provide that, I mean, they do very careful statistics. Mm-hmm. So as a as a chiropractor, uh, I pay uh, $2,500 a year in malpractice. Mm-hmm. Uh, a surgeon is talking about in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. For malpractice. For malpractice. <laughs> 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 you know, it, it's if if it wasn't so sad, it would be funny. Uh huh. You know that you're willing to have someone open you up, uh, do surgical procedures, uh, have a um, you know uh, one a chance for dying. Mm-hmm. Uh, two, uh, the results. You know, long term types of results for neck surgery. Uh, if you know there, unless it's you know, a crisis type of situation. Every time that you do neck surgery in five years, you would have been better off, almost guaranteed, uh, if you had never had anything done. Mm -hmm. In other words, you're always worse off with surgery over a five-year period than if you had never had anything done at all. Interesting. Now, you can get some short-term type of relief, but you only do surgery if it's an absolute crisis. There are so many better ways of treating uh, a uh, a problem like that mm-hmm. than surgery. And the safety, uh, you know, you're talking about chances of infection. Uh, you're talking about uh, possibility of uh, blood clots. You're talking about... Uh, problems with, uh, you know, possibility of problems with the anesthesia, uh, all those different types of things. I mean, there are, just with anesthesia, uh, there are uh, 11 to 16 deaths per 100,000 people. Mm. You know, and that is the official center of disease control figures. And one of the things that is a is a real problem as we're talking about the safety of surgery is independent studies. Most of the data is collected by the surgeons mm-hmm. and the anesthesiologists in the hospitals who are involved in perpetuating this. Mm-hmm. So that's where they get their statistics from. Interesting. And independent studies find that it's it's grossly underestimated the problems that are associated with surgeries and with drugs. Mm-hmm. Because the people who are reporting it are the ones who are actually doing the procedures and they don't really want that to be well known I, I mean I know many of the cases of people who've who've had surgeries and um, uh, had adverse problems and it, it was never really reported mm-hmm. you know by the by the surgeons or by the the hospitals that this was was a real problem so this could be underreported uh, no this isn't could be uh-huh this is definitely underreported. Underreported the problems that are associated with that. Any time that you cut somebody open, uh, then you've got uh, issues that can be involved in that. Now, I'm not saying that they don't necessarily need to be done, mm-hmm. but according to independent studies, uh, the vast majority of uh, surgeries, you know, mm-hmm. uh, shouldn't be done. It's just like you know, as they were talking about low back and neck surgery. You know, if you go in with a problem and you go to a surgeon, 30%, -hmm. you know, likelihood that you're going to wind up with surgery. If really the number should be those people who really need surgeries is about 2%. Mm -hmm. That's a a true 
number of those that really require it. So, you know, we're getting a tremendous amount of uh, surgeries and procedures that are being done that could be taken care of in a in another way. Mm. So let's talk more about mortality rate of surgeries. You talked about... Um did you talk about childbirth? Well, if you're talking about you know just having a child, it's about five to ten deaths per one hundred thousand. Uh, general anesthesia, according to the official statistics, ones reported by the anesthesiologist, uh-huh. eleven to sixteen deaths per person. Mm-hmm. Though that there's per hundred thousand. Uh, hysterectomy is about one hundred and twenty to one hundred and sixty deaths per one hundred thousand. Gallbladder surgery, uh, depending on uh, you know who's keeping the statistics, it's anywhere from a, from 150 to 1,400 deaths per hundred thousand. And removing the large bowel uh, due to cancer is between 800 and 5,000 deaths per hundred thousand. Mm. So those are the the things that are reported, but it, it's just uh, uh, an example on that was that uh, you know you're talking about uh, a knee replacement, mm-hmm. you know something simple as that. Uh, I what the official numbers were pretty pretty low, you know mm-hmm. that there was actually complications that that took place on that. But uh, they did more extensive types of studies, and they took about 240,000 people who had had uh, surgeries uh, just to see what was going on. And they found that uh, actually about uh, 1 in 45 people wound up with a blood clot. Wow. And when they were having that re- knee replacement? Having a knee replacement. Mm-hmm. And then uh, out of that, uh, one in, in 45, I mean, you know, in the the time that the blood clot can actually happen was as many as three months afterwards, which was much more than what they had expected. Um, so, I mean, that wasn't actually a, a large number, and about 270 died from the blood clot. Mm. So, you know, you're talking about some pretty significant numbers there. Okay, when we come back, let's talk more of how to avoid surgery. You can win a free 60-minute massage in a relaxing spa at the Prather Practice. Each month, we have a drawing to give away a free massage to one of our lucky Facebook and Twitter fans. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. This is The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. The Voice of Health Wellness Tip with Dr. Robert Prather of the Prather Practice. Dr. Prather, there was a major study by an insurance company that focused on the health care model you use in your office. What were the results of that study? It, it actually was quite a seismic mm-hmm. finding. Uh, I like that term. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. Uh, it's a Chicago-based health maintenance organization. The group has 600,000 enrolled members. So they took about 10,000 of those mm-hmm. and put them in with chiropractors who are trained in the structure function model. Mm. Now, not all chiropractors are trained in the structure function model. These gentlemen uh, actually got uh, the same type of training that I had. Okay. And they were the primary care physicians. After five years, they had startling results. Mm. They had a reduction of 60.2% in hospital admissions. Wow. They had 59% reduction in hospital days. Mm-hmm. They had a 62% reduction in outpatient surgeries and procedures. And a remarkable 85% reduction in pharmaceutical costs. Wow. This resulted in a total savings in the first five years of 40% over all the other primary care physicians. 40%. 40% reduction. If you can imagine that we could reduce our health care costs across the board by 40%. And get those kind of results. And uh, there were 80% less reactions there was a a reduction in lawsuits Mm -hmm. there was there was a reduction in everything plus the people were much much healthier and much more satisfied Mm -hmm. the interesting thing is that the specialists the cardiologists the oncologists 
uh, the gastroenterologist, all the specialists, uh, as they, they were asked to rate the difference in the two different models. Mm-hmm. They gave the structure function model as the primary care mm-hmm. coming in a 96% satisfaction rating. And they gave the disease model as primary care a 40%. The results are are indisputable. Schedule your appointment at the Prather Practice, 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. The Prather Practice, restoring hope. You're listening to The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, the most comprehensive wellness center in the Midwest. Well, today we're talking about how to avoid surgery. And Dr. Prather, before um, we go on, I want to go over that statistic because it's, you know, it's pretty important. On neck and low back surgery? Yeah, neck and low back surgery. Um, Can you go over that again? Sure. If you go to a surgeon, uh, orthopedic or uh, neurosurgeon, and for the evaluation of your neck or low back, you have a, you you wind up having a 30% chance of having surgery. Mm -hmm. If you go to a chiropractor first, uh, you only have a 2% chance of surgery. Yeah. And that's a big difference. That's a very big difference. And the 2% is actually more of an accurate number of those who really, really require the surgery. Uh, and the interesting part is that the long-term type of outcomes are, are much, much better mm-hmm. without surgery. Well, and just think about how much we'd save on health care. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Well, what are the financial incentives of surgery. Well, it, it, we have a very interesting system here in America where you have, uh, of course, insurance that's paying for, you know, health care. So uh, the, the, you have other people determining what is reimbursed and what's not. And then the uh, more dangerous a procedure is, the more it is reimbursed. Mm-hmm. Okay. At the higher level. At a higher level. Mm-hmm. So uh, what they do is they have, uh, the way that they determined on insurance reimbursement is they have a team of doctors, and they have a standard uh, evaluation of what type of reimbursements uh, can occur. And some of the major types of things that they look on that is what is the chance of this person dying? What is the uh, danger level? Of, of complications that can occur from it. And, uh, you know, what is the effort that, you know, goes into it? Mm-hmm. And the, if you have a procedure where you could take a, uh, a supplement with no side effects, have, uh, you know, great outcomes, mm-hmm. and there's very li- real, little risk of any type of adverse reactions, uh, you don't get reimbursed for that. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you have uh, moderate, um, you know, outcomes, uh, you know, and uh, you have a, uh, a more of a risk mm-hmm. that's involved with that, not quite as great, uh, then you get a middle kind of reimbursement. If you have something that you're probably going to die from, mm-hmm. uh, it has very little success. And uh, is extremely difficult to do. Oh, we're going to pay you a lot of money for that. Mm. Interesting. And that is our system of health care. Uh-huh. So the more that the doctor can put you in danger, mm-hmm. uh, the more he's going to get paid. Interesting. So, you, you know, when you're, you're looking at that type of a situation, uh, you know, a doctor tries to be, you know... Um, not look at that in in that way, but it, it does influence. Mm-hmm. It does absolutely. Because hospitals influence need to that. make money, and hospitals need, need to, to make, make money. money and, and right, if you can give a supplement and cure somebody of their low back pain, you're not going to get paid anything. If you're going to do major surgery, um, long term, not a very great outcome, mm-hmm. and. Uh, uh, 
and a, 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 very difficult, a lot of risk involved into it, then yeah, you're going to make you're going to make quite a few thousands of dollars. Now, can you um, say you're you're weighing the surgery? Can you get those statistics uh, on the risk? There are ways of determining risk. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, matter of fact, there's a scale that uh, surgeons can use just to plug it in mm-hmm. uh, that, uh, uh, that they have to determine risk because there are different levels of risk. Mm-hmm. You know, the older you are, the more risky the surgery. Uh, the less healthy you are, uh, the more risky the surgery, the more pharmaceuticals you've been on. Uh, in other words, there's an awful lot of factors that go into that. Mm-hmm. And a a surgeon should go through those before they determine whether they're going ahead and do surgery or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, do they share those with you? Eh, not really. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so looking at those types of risk is something that you should be able to ask your surgeon beforehand, and they should provide that to you. But it's not always done. So, are surgeries getting safer? Uh, surgeries in some ways, uh, because of uh, I- ability to uh, do the surgeries, the technology has improved. But there are some things that have actually become more of a problem. Uh, one of the things is infections. Right. Uh, infections are, are actually increasing. And one of the uh, problems with that is that uh, as that has increased, as a matter of fact, recently there's been, in the last four years, there's been a 19% increase in, in uh, infections. Because, one, we were very reliant on antibiotics and, um, uh, you know, procedures along those lines. So mm-hmm. we're, we're having more of a problem with, uh, with infections on that. As a matter of fact, the infection rate, if you go in for surgery, is about 2% chance. So you said there's been a 19% increase in infections. in the last four years. Wow. Uh, Just because the, you know, one of the things that is used is is antibiotics to uh, keep that under control. But uh, we're we're losing the battle against antibiotic, you know, against bacteria. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so one of the things that is a very real possibility is that as we lose the battle with bacteria Mm -hmm. and antibiotics, then... Uh, a real risk that is talked about, um, you know, by the Center of Disease Control is that uh, unless it's an emergency, probably surgeries will no longer be recommended because the risk at one point, you know, if the antibiotics are no longer working, the, the risk of uh, infection is, is actually too great. Mm. So, Dr. Prather, how can someone avoid surgery? Oh, uh, well, first off, uh, one of the things is, is uh, you know, if you are recommended to get surgery, uh, get a second opinion, get a third opinion, and actually get it from uh, other people. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, structure function care doctor mm-hmm. is always a good place to go to see if something can be done uh, before the surgical procedure. Right. So you're saying two or three opinions. Correct. Um, a structure function opinion. And let's talk about that. Many of our radio listeners, um, you know, we're educating. The FDA puts health care into two categories, Correct. disease care model and structure function model. Dr. Prather, can you elaborate on that? Certainly. The um, disease care model is what we're familiar with, and it is pharmaceuticals and surgery. Uh, for diseases, which is uh, diseases, uh, you know, people always think diseases are real things. Mm-hmm. Uh, diseases are a com- combination of symptoms that we put a name to. Uh-huh. And the purpose of disease care is to bring those symptoms under control. Mm-hmm. Uh, surgery is, to, is another way of actually working along those lines. Disease care is not to make you healthier. Mm-hmm. It's to solve a a uh, a condition, a uh, surgery, those types of things. But it, you know, it's much better if you actually have all of your parts. Mm-hmm. Is a much healthier person than actually losing your parts mm-hmm. or having them replaced. Uh, those are not sound like a car. Good things, yeah. <laughs> so that you know, that's that's not the that's not the ideal type of situation. That's when your body is no longer able to heal itself. 
Mm-hmm. Structure function care, on the other hand, brings the body back into homeostasis is the design of structure function care. And the way that you do that is by balancing the system. And you can do that uh, through structure alignment. Mm-hmm. Chiropractic is an important part of that. Uh, there's many other aspects on that. Uh, rehab, mm-hmm. uh, massage therapy, uh, different modalities along those lines. Uh, and then functional care, where you bring the body back into balance. And there's many different ways of doing that. All structure function care has a very low risk. Mm-hmm. If it has a high risk, then it's disease care. If it's structure function care, there is a very low risk on that. That's why, you know, I laughed at that situation where the person was talking about, oh, I don't, you know, want to go to a uh, structure function care doctor. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's risky. By its very definition, it's not. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's, in other words, the things that we do in here, uh, we really, really can't hurt you. Mm-hmm. You know, in, in other words, uh, hopefully we, we help you get into a homeostasis balance, which we do very, very regularly. Um, uh, the vast majority of people, we get things balanced out and get them well. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to hurt you mm-hmm. with a structure function care. Yeah, so what makes it more effective, the structure uh, function care? You're bringing the body back into balance. You're actually producing health. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I talk to the FDA people, uh, they say, you know, basically I'm a health doctor. I make people healthier. Mm-hmm. Disease care is not designed to make you healthier. Pharmaceuticals also bring, always bring you further away from homeostasis. Now, that doesn't mean that they're not necessary. Right. But they always bring you away from uh, homeostasis. And as I've had debates with, with uh, medical doctors, they say, well, that's, that's not true. You know, antibiotics make people healthier. I say, no, 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 no. Antibiotics are to solve a situation, absolutely, where there's a bacterial infection that's gone rampant. But something before that allowed that to occur. Mm -hmm. And then whenever you do take an antibiotic, a 10-day antibiotic uh, treatment, um, it it, it takes three months for the body to immune system to recover from that. Mm-hmm. So it takes you further out of homeostasis. And if it doesn't take you further out of homeostasis, then it's not disease care. And surgery and pharmaceuticals are always take you further from homeostasis. When we come back, let's talk about how structure function care and disease care can work together. Listen to the Voice of Health Radio on your smartphone or tablet on all of the top radio apps available. Tune in Radio, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. You can find these apps and more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. This is The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. Laughter is the best medicine. New study every day contradicts an old study. Some of them are just plain odd. Did anybody see this? 60 Minutes got a hold of this one. A full segment they did on dogs in healthcare. Let me see. I see some nods. I think we're going to have different breeds eventually for different specialties, you know? If you're choking on something, you need to see the retriever, right? (laughs) Here, Heimlich, new patient. Go get him. Go get him. (laughs) If you're anemic, you need the bloodhound. (laughs) And if you have any kind of GI issues, well, you need a referral to the Shih Tzu. So... (laughs) Are you frustrated by not getting to the root cause of your health issue? Are you tired of not knowing why you're always fatigued? Are you wanting to say no to toxic drugs? Have you lost hope? Are you just tired of being sick and tired? At the Prather Practice, we want you to know that we have the answers for you. We offer the alternative to the disease care model. We are the drug-free model to health and wellness. At the Prather Practice, we look for the underlying cause of your health problem and not just the symptomatology. Through thorough diagnostics, we find your individual health blueprint for your treatment. Where the disease care model is symptom-based, the structure function model we practice gets to the root of your health issue. The Prather Practice is the most comprehensive wellness center in the Midwest. Our integrated practice offers you the most treatment options to restore your health and your hope. Learn more about the Prather Practice by calling 317-848-8048 or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. I'm 
I'm Lisa Prather, and you're listening to The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, where we get to the root cause of your health issue. Well, Dr. Prather, we're talking today about how to avoid surgery, and we were talking about the difference um, in structure function care from disease care, but how can they work together? And that is something that really should be done. Um, A good split between structure function care and disease care is about an 80% structure function care Mm -hmm. model and a 20% disease care model. Right now, it's about 90% disease care and 10% structure function. Mm -hmm. So I I think things are way out of balance. Yeah, the public's asking for. For a change. There is a, a demand for change. Uh, people are, are tired of it when uh, we actually start working with people and they start getting the results. They say, wow, why couldn't have this been done before? Mm-hmm. And we did have a system that rewarded uh, disease care and punished structure function care. As a matter of fact, uh, structure function care was uh, basically uh, outlawed for a tremendous amount of time. Mm-hmm. But the public started to seek it, demand it. Uh, the uh, federal government has recognized that. And then also we have a crisis in the cost. Uh, disease care is extremely, extremely expensive. Structure function care has uh, tremendous cost savings and a, a much better result uh, mm-hmm. when they were doing the uh, study up in Chicago with 65,000 people. They found over a 10-year period a 60% savings with structure function care. Uh, There was 85% less adverse problems Mm -hmm. uh, that occurred. So, you know, really solving the health care crisis that we have nowadays, uh, the answer is to go to structure function care. Mm -hmm. But how do you see, I want to talk about, you know, how do you see them working together? Well, we've we've implemented that within our office. Mm -hmm. One, we have a, a, a medical director. Uh, Bala Rajaswamy, who is our communication with the uh, disease care. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have a nurse practitioner here who does the examinations and uh, provides uh, uh, that type of a procedure and then also uh, screens the patients for the structure function care uh, model. Uh, and then as we are, have implemented that, then there has been a much greater communication with the disease care providers, mm-hmm. which is important uh, because, uh, as I said before, 20% really is a, is a good number. So, you know, it's not an either or. We need to become integrated. Mm-hmm. We need to learn how to communicate better. And we need to uh, start working as a team for the benefit of the patient instead of uh, fighting each other. Right. Right. Uh, And that's one of the things that, um, you know, I've even, uh, there are an awful lot of of doctors, uh, medical doctors who are specialists who have seen the value of structure function care. But there are an awful lot who don't. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have had, uh, you know, uh, people who said, oh, you know, doctors who... Uh, where uh, surgeons would say, oh, the last thing you want to do is go to a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I had a very interesting case where a uh, gentleman came in and and, um, I sat there and and said, well, you know, how who referred you in? And he said, well, my orthopedic surgeon, this was a while ago when orthopedic surgeons weren't referring to me. And I said, well, how did that happen? Mm -hmm. And he sits there and he, he, he... uh, had actually already done surgery and uh, twice and he was in really horrible shape and he was talking to the surgeon and the surgeon said uh, you know uh, well he was talking to the surgeon and said you know what do I do now mm-hmm. and the surgeon said uh, I don't know but whatever you do don't go to a chiropractor <laughs> so he did <laughs> he goes, I like that guy he goes huh I had never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Thanks, a re- doc. that was a referral as far as he was concerned. <laughs> so he came here and said, "Yeah, you, know, you know," he says, "I don't have too much to lose." We like those independent thinkers. <laughs> <don't we? laughs> I don't have too much to lose. What can you do for me? Uh-huh. I said, "You know," he said, "You know, is this dangerous?" You know, and I said, N- "No, there are many different ways of." doing adjustments and I said basically we would be doing reflux adjustment 
uh, for your condition, uh, acupuncture, uh, some other different types of therapies. I said, I have less of a chance of injuring you than going for a massage. <laughs> you know, a massage therapist has a higher higher chance of injuring you than I will. Uh-huh. He said, oh, that sounds good, because, you know, he says massage is one of the few things that I do that actually helps. Right. So we started the procedure, and uh, he had a uh, another follow-up uh, with the surgeon in uh, about, a, you know, about a month later. Yeah. And he went in there, and the surgeon was looking at him, you know, just walking. Uh-huh. He said, okay, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> And he said, well, you know, you rem- remember when you told me not to go to a chiropractor? <laughs> he goes, you didn't. And he said, I did. And he said, look. Mm-hmm. And he said, well, he said, you were just lucky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's a... It's, you know, even just that one patient whose neighbor... You know, I was talking to her. You just wonder what are, what are people basing that on? You know, well, actually, she based it from the surgeon. Yeah, right. But what are they basing it on? <laughs> Maybe I should say that well, with the statistics, it show was something just so different. It was just like this. This uh, one guy said, "Well, you know, what did you base you know your experience on? You know, mm-hmm. with the chiropractor." And he said, "Well, I had heard it." Well, he said, "You know, was there any statistics? No." Was there any personal experience? No. Did you have patients that were injured by by chiropractors? No. Uh Uh-huh. Why did you make that decision? Well, it's just known. (laughs) Who made this up? Uh Uh-huh. Right. Uh, You know, and one of the things that is very important to realize is that there was a... There is a deliberate... Brainwashing going on. Mm -hmm. Not only of... um, of, uh, you know, uh, doctors, Mm -hmm. which there was actually a very real campaign to uh, discredit structure function care uh, with medical doctors so that they wouldn't explore that, Mm -hmm. uh, which was funded by the pharmaceutical companies. Uh, It's been very well proven. proven, It's very, you know, it's in a court of law. It went to the Supreme Court, correct? It did. Mm -hmm. It did. It was well proven that 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 was a, a concerted effort, which they have not abandoned. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then it's it's something that's also perpetuated to the public, right? You know, right. I mean, films, movies, TV shows uh, all have to pass through uh, f- pharmaceutical and surgical review to make sure that they don't portray negative aspects. Yeah, and it's interesting what they do with chiropractic, you know. Yes. Um, you know, and how they portray that in sitcoms and. Right. But yeah. Duck Dynasty had a trip to the chiropractor <laughs> <laughs> that was very positive. Very positive. Yes. And, and so but they don't, you know, listen to everybody else. Right, right. <laughs> That's what I like about those people. <laughs> so there, there is a, a concerted effort, or has been a concerted effort, and it is slowly dying, uh, mm-hmm. to discredit structure function care. And many medical doctors have been honestly taught that it's dangerous, which by the FDA's very own rules is it can't be dangerous. Mm-hmm. If it's dangerous, then it can't be classified as structure function care. Right. Well, when should someone think about avoiding surgery? I, I, surgery should be a, a last option, and uh, there should be a, an agreement that that's really what's necessary. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are definite times for surgical intervention, um, but if you know one of the if you've gotten to that point, uh, you should have been working on that a long time ago. Yeah, right. And yeah. we hear that from people, you know, that come in. Right. Yeah, but it's never too late. It's never. So too late. if surgery is unavoidable, what preparations should be made? Well, the the healthier you are, the better outcome. Mm-hmm. So you need to be well. One, made sure that you're not sick. Uh, blood pressure is under control. You don't smoke. You're not taking pharmaceuticals. Uh, you know, as many different types of things that you can make yourself healthier, the better. Matter of fact, I've had patients who came in where I sit there and said, "Yeah, you need surgery on that hip." Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I couldn't agree more. But you know, we've got uh, six weeks to get you prepared. Right. 
and we go through one to well of course they aren't taking anything two weeks before Mm -hmm. but we start them and get their immune system up Uh, we get uh, things uh, you know do a nutritional evaluation get them on some good nutrition we also do adjustments I mean uh, and acupuncture getting things aligned rehab Mm -hmm. lined up I get the inflammation down I get most of the pain under control Mm-hmm. You know, so that, that that things are in pretty good. And then when they go in for the surgery, uh, it goes v- much smoother, much quicker outcomes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, it's something that if you are going to have surgery, it is unavoidable. Uh, getting as healthy and as lined up structurally and functionally as you possibly can, the better the surgical outcomes are. Right. Makes sense. Well, talk about um, what post surgical strategies need to be followed. I was thinking one of our patients was visiting family in Phoenix. Sure. She tripped, ended up having to get a hip replacement. Right. Uh, We were her first stop when the plane flew in (laughs) on the way home. Yes. She came in and and we're able to help her with post-surgical. We see people with knee replacements and Absolutely. able to align and Absolutely. get that inflammation down. And one of the things that you know we did was uh, we started her right away on a program of uh, chiropractic adjustments, acupuncture, uh, therapy, rehab. Uh, she was starting to get some swelling in the legs uh, from the surgery. We were able to get that under control. Uh, so the lymphatic system wasn't working well, and she had had health problems before all along those lines. So we knew her situation, got her up to par, got the nutritional. And she's uh, uh, the surgeon we're, we actually keep in close contact with. We talked to him beforehand. Uh, very nice gentleman and very positive on, on what we were doing. And, you know, we really kept a lot of problems under control. Mm-hmm. Uh, another example was I had a gal who came in and it had been nine months since her knee surgery and was still having a tremendous amount of pain. And she was going to the surgeon. The surgeon was uh, concerned about it. He says, oh, gosh, the last thing I want to do is have to do another knee surgery. One, it's not good for her. And then it also docks him. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not a, that's a black eye for him. But he was thinking that he was going to have to. We started her on the program, got the swelling down, got the knee pain all corrected, the adjustments. She could feel an immediate difference mm-hmm. on the knee. Uh, the surgeon was like, oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. You know, right. and, and just uh, and she had already done the physical therapy, but, you know, just was not getting the results. So coming to the structure function care just worked well. Great. Well, thank you, Dr. Prather. When we come back, we're going to hear from Charlie and how he was able to avoid surgery. Never miss an episode of The Voice of Health so that you can stay informed and empowered about your health. Get a podcast of our show automatically delivered to you every week by signing up for our show on iTunes. You can find that link on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. And don't forget, thevoiceofhealthradio.com has complete archives of all of our past episodes with an audio library of information to help you add more life to your years and more years to your life. This is The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. The Voice of Health Wellness Tip with Dr. Robert Prather of the Prather Practice. Dr. Prather, what is diathermy? The way that we like to uh, describe it to people is it's a large coiled magnet that produces a uh, a short wave beam that goes into the body. Men with prostate uh, infections, prostatitis, get up and say, oh, wow. I'm not in pain anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't have that irritation. So in chronic types of uh, different types of infections, uh, sinus infections, uh, ear infections, lung infections, for the bladder infections, uh, kidney infections, we can utilize it on that. One of the things that is really, really important for diathermy and, and underutilized is increasing the circulation. And we've had patients who were scheduled to have amputations of toes, Uh, even feet, because of the loss of circulation due to uh, diabetic neuropathy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were able to have a series of uh, diathermy treatments, uh, usually about 24. If you set up the diathermy, have the right settings, which which we know and understand, you don't have to go through the amputations that are involved. That's one thing that isn't uh, put out there as it should be, which... It was very frustrating. You know, it's just like this gentleman said, you know, I was scheduled to have my foot cut off. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, 24 sessions with the diathermy, and uh, the vascular surgeon says, uh, I've got better circulation than, than he did. Did he tell him about the diathermy unit? He did. And uh, <laughs> the guy said, well, I'd never heard of that before. Mm-hmm. You know, that that would be effective. And that was one of the th- old things that the diathermy unit was used for, uh, was for the uh, diabetic neuropathy with the loss of circulation down into the uh, feet. So if someone's scheduled to have their uh, toes cut off or uh, foot cut off, the diathermy is something that uh, definitely should be looked at. It's been effective on everyone so far. And you talked about 24 sessions, but when you look at different patients, the amount of sessions would be different for different it can issues be. that they have, correct? It can be. Otitis media, you see it in immediate difference just that day. Mm-hmm. Uh, matter of fact, the uh, people with uh, loss of circulation can tell a, uh, a big difference right away. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, he says, well, I've got... I've got pink toes now. I haven't had pink toes in a long time. Mm -hmm. And not only just for the circulation, but for those who have diabetic neuropathy, the diathermy is uh, extremely, extremely beneficial. Schedule your appointment at the Prather Practice, 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. The Prather Practice, restoring hope. You're listening to The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, where our mission is restoring hope to our patients. Today in our Restoring Hope segment, we're joined by Charlie, a patient here at The Prather Practice. Well, Charlie, what brought you into The Prather Practice? Uh, Well, I was uh, experiencing some trouble with my right wrist, an old, old injury that I had treatment for, and the pain had just gotten unbearable. Mm-hmm. not being able to sleep through the night, not being able to work functionally, most importantly, not being able to ride my motorcycle. Right. Um, that's sort of a joke around my house. But the just everyday functionality was decreasing and uh, just painful. Honestly, um, this was my last resort before looking at surgery. Uh, and how long have you been dealing with this problem? Oh, gosh, this injury happened in the 70s. Um, and so it's, I've been limited since then just by the nature of the injury, but probably in the last two years, uh, I've been going for the cortisone shots and been trying to find uh, more mainstream solutions without effect. Mm-hmm. Tell me about your results that you have seen here. At the seen here? Yes. Well, it's amazing. First of all, I just want to thank you and Dr. Prather for the uh, energy, time, commitment. You know, when you started this years ago to get all this knowledge, it was certainly not mainstream, and you may have taken some arrows or some jeers. Mm-hmm. Thank you for working through that. Mm-hmm. Um, but the results have been amazing, mm-hmm. absolutely amazing. I've been here maybe 10 visits now, uh, and after the second visit, I could tell things were changing. I'm sleeping all night now. I'm not taking those 12 ibuprofen a day mm-hmm. just to function. Um, I can work at a computer desk uh, with the mouse all day without having to literally stop and pull my fingers out where they've been constricting from the uh, pain and, and nerve damage. It's just amazing. Mm-hmm. Just I can't say enough. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. What would you say to someone that might be thinking about coming in to the Prather practice? I uh, don't have any um, preconceived ideas. Mm-hmm. Don't think that they're going to give you a pill and it's all going to go away. Uh, one of the things I personally like is that you don't give me any pills. You know, mm-hmm. you, you want to manipulate the muscles, the bones, the, mm-hmm. the nerves, and the education. Um, you just help me know that there is hope. Um, the other thing that stands out is... Um, in my mind, I call this the Chick-fil-A of doctors' offices <laughs> because I really believe that, you know, people here want to be involved in my life. I was impressed that you knew my name on the mm-hmm. second visit and you called me by the, the desk. Uh, people called me by name. Mm-hmm. And just more than just 
paid to be nice to me. Mm -hmm. They seem to be genuinely interested. And so conversations and relationships have started since then. Um, And so that's just very appealing, just Mm -hmm. very unusual. It's not clinical and it's not sterile. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm coming to visit friends now. Um, But give, uh, give it a fair chance. I say after the second visit, I knew that something positive was happening. Mm. And what about the motorcycle? Oh, well, I've ridden several hours at a time now. (laughs) So I have a big trip planned in July, and I'm looking forward to it with uh, anticipation instead of dread. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, so it's... uh, And and I knew that you were truly interested in me when you said, could you bring your motorcycle to the office because I'd like to see how you hold the grip. To see if I can help your hand anymore. Well, just because I want to ride. Ha! <laughs> that works too. That works too. Uh, thank you, Charlie. You're a wonderful um, breath of fresh air every time you come in. Well, thank you again for both what you've given me to the uh, use of my hand and uh, quality of life. All right. Thank you. Dr. Prather, I want to bring you in on this discussion. You know, Charlie talked about how the cortisone injections did not work and the surgical option for his wrist injury was not appealing to him. What treatments did you use in Charlie's case to help him restore the function of his wrist and get him out of pain that he suffered with so, for so many years? Uh, the first thing we did was we adjusted his wrist. Ah, there's a lot of bones in that wrist. There are a lot of bones in that wrist, and and uh, things were definitely a disaster. Mm-hmm. Um, one, uh, he had had an earlier botch surgery, basically, mm-hmm. and uh, things needed to be re- rearranged. So we uh, started to do some adjusting on his wrist, and he was just kind of watching it, amazed. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was actually a radio listener. Yes. Yeah. And then he started to move it and said, oh, my gosh, I can move my wrist now. Mm-hmm. You know, it, he says, uh, you know, it, when he had actually had the first surgery, he was 19, and he was uh, he's a little older now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, uh, after the first adjustment, he says, that's the best it's felt since I was 19 years old. Wow. Uh, so on the first adjustment, he could see a, a dramatic difference. So uh, we continued to do the adjustments, and I think we did about twelve on that, mm-hmm. and then uh, and are done with the uh, with that particular procedure. Uh, we also did acupuncture on it. Uh, we've done some rehab, uh, some uh, electrical stimulation, uh, the numbness, the problems with yeah, the he hands was having have, tingling that. Oh, it was away. awful, and the weakness into the the hand was just ama- amazing. Uh, you know what he was putting up with, mm-hmm. and uh, surgery was not going to work. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the the surgeon actually wasn't really that excited about doing the surgery, mm-hmm. just because he felt that it wasn't really going to be successful. But he really didn't have anything else to offer him. Mm-hmm. He had already tried the physical therapy, uh, just that by itself. And what was really necessary, nothing was really going to get Charlie uh, fixed uh, until he had had the chiropractic adjustments to the wrist. And getting you know, all those bones aligned. Get those bones aligned, and then rehab mm-hmm. works fantastic. I know. And I worked with Charlie <laughs> with corrective exercise. Certainly. And we worked on really stretching those muscles because all those muscles in the forearm and wrist Mm -hmm. and that sheath had gotten really tight really tight and we were able to run that rapid release which can break up scar tissue correct was very effective for him and scar tissue was an uh, you know getting the bones aligned first off is is absolutely cr- critical because you've got all of those bones that were putting uh, abnormal pressure on the nervous system so uh getting that lined up first uh, making sure that that was good. The acupuncture stimulates the electromagnetic energy of that uh, of the wrist, and so what that did was uh, help the body to start to move in the direction of taking away uh, scar tissue. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, even like surgical scars, you can put acupuncture on there, and those scars uh, can disappear mm-hmm. just because of your stimulation of the body's own healing capabilities. Uh, you can do it a tremendous you amount. You mean our that. body has healing capabilities? <laughs> <laughs> our body does have healing capabilities. Yes. Uh, yeah, and that's one of the things that's really a distinction between structure function care and disease cares. Many of the disease care doctors uh, really think of the body as, as stupid. 
You know, mm-hmm. it really doesn't work well. But at the point that they come to that, the body is no longer able to control homeostasis. The body's been fearfully and wonderfully made right. by if our creator. Structure function works with the body and actually respects the body and brings that back into harmony. Wonderful. And Charlie's back on his motorcycle. He's got a long trip coming up he's excited about. And sure. It's great to, uh, um, you know, discharge him and, and let him go on that trip and have a wonderful time. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Dr. Prather. Thank you. The Prather Practice is located at 8902 North Meridian Street on the north side of Indianapolis, just south of the I-465 Loop. If we can help you to achieve better health, we'd love to hear from you. Connect with our office at 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Join us again here next week or anytime on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com for The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. The Prather Plan Weight Loss Program is safe, comprehensive, medically supervised, and designed just for you. Forget the trendy diets and instead start with a roadmap that actually resets your body's metabolism for optimal fat burning and increased energy. The Prather Plan has 6, 10, or 14 week programs with a proven record of success and with guaranteed weight loss. The Prather Plan is an individualized program that is tailored to your needs to create healthy new habits in your life. You'll receive support from a certified health counselor, a nutritionist, and an exercise physiologist for maximum results. Many weight loss programs can include unhealthy loss of muscle or organ weight. We target your ideal body fat percentage so you can lose body fat in a healthy way where the pounds stay off. Contact the Prather Practice today to schedule a consultation and create a healthier you. 317-848-8048 or on the web at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. The Prather Practice. Restore Storing Hope.